I spent all morning doing those Disney brackets. If you want to see them, I tweeted them and I shared two of them on Instagram. So go ahead and take a gander. I did objective and subjective because I just can't help myself. That's literally what I'm doing here. So I had to do objectively and subjectively. Objectively, my brother and I realized Lion King wins everything. Objectively. Like if you look at it in the span of things, Lion King wins everything. Subjectively, I love Winnie the Pooh, apparently. I really love Winnie the Pooh, you guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about The Strongest Man in the World. The Strongest Man in the World is a 1975 theatrical release. It's directed by Vincent McAvity, cinematography by Andrew Jackson. It's edited by Cotton Warburton. It's written by Joseph L. McAvity and Herman Groves. It is the third movie in the Computer War Tennis Shoes series. I think it's also the last one but don't hold me to that. The film stars Kurt Russell, Joe Flynn, and Michael McGreevy. Kurt Russell, I talk all about his history and his stardom in the Super Dad video I made. So if you wanna learn all about Kurt Russell, please go watch the Super Dad video. Joe Flynn has been in a lot of Disney movies, specifically with Kurt Russell. I feel like they're always together, which is hilarious. But he's also known for McHale's Navy and frequently guest starring on Batman. Unfortunately, he passed away after shooting this film, but he had already finished his voice work for The Rescuers, which wouldn't be released until two years after this film, and that would be his final film role. Michael McGreevy is best known for his Disney work and being the screenwriter of the TV show fam. That's it. My favorite Disney role to date is Sammy the Way Out Sale, and I think it will be forever. I was super excited for this movie because the first two really surprised me and ended up being really, really funny, and this movie let me down. It was nowhere near as good as the first two, which was so sad. First and foremost, Kurt Russell's barely in this one. He's in it, like he's in a bunch of scenes, but not as main of a character as he was in the first two. And that's weird because I considered him the star and the main character. And if there's gonna be a third, I expect to follow that main character through another adventure of some sort, where his friend Skylar was much more of a main character this time, which is great because I love him, but I loved Dexter and Skylar's shenanigans together not separately. The sequel was so funny because of Skylar and Dexter's play off each other when they were being invisible and all that kind of stuff. And in this one, it's a lot of like, Skylar made the formula and there are so many scenes with Dean Higgins and other school people. And there are so many scenes with Alfonso Arno again. And at this point, I'm sick of Alfonso Arno. I don't want him to be a villain in the films anymore. He's not an interesting villain at all. Does the same stuff to get arrested again. Like it's just annoying. I was more interested to see the shenanigans between Dexter and his friend Skylar because they built something that made you be able to lift a ship. Like, come on, that is writing itself funny. And it didn't write itself. So I was really disappointed. And I cannot for the life of me understand why Kurt Russell wasn't in it a lot. He's the main character of the film series. <laughs> so the cinematography had movement, it had some great moments, the harsh shadows still exist, but it wasn't better than the sequel. The sequel had fantastic cinematography. So much movement in the sequel. I remember, I remember that move I really liked when it was following Dexter and Skylar and then to the janitor. Like that movement was so simple, but so effective because of the mid-ground, foreground, background all that kind of elements in the shot. And this film was like, cinematography was fine. You know what I mean? Like compared to its predecessors, when this one should be better because it's later in the film industry life, even though it's the third one. So like, it makes sense that it wouldn't be better than the first two, but still sad. <laughs> this film made $6.6 .6 million at the box office, which is not good. That's all I have for The Strongest Man in the World, mostly because I was disappointed, which makes me sad. I thought it was gonna be so much funnier and it wasn't. So I think I'll give it two barbells out of 10. Our total movie count is. Parents at home crack on are still the same. If you wanna keep up with the movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, and subscribe, but I'm not sure if you are. So you do you and do not be Alfonso Arno about it because I've had it. You guys sure are swell. <laughs> not sponsored.